Yeah, I mean, it was the next logical step. He couldn't stay in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is lovely, but it was so small. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big personality. <laughs> That was Stuart Sheffman, a.k.a. Brocast Stuart. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. Thanks for joining us. This is another special episode for us. You might already know Stuart, and you might have caught an episode we did with him way back in Season 1. Over the years, we started doing things a little differently here on Storied SF, and so we caught up with Stuart this time sitting down at the wooden nickel to hear all about his life. Check back Thursday for part two. Here's Stuart. My parents, uh, my dad's a Jew from New York. My mom's a Jew from El Paso. Oh. And uh, they, uh, they met in Los Angeles. And um, what's crazy is, what's funny is, um, my dad had been up here in San Francisco and he like, uh, met this woman in a bar was hitting on her and she's like look I'm married but I've got a cousin uh, in LA you live in LA I'll give you her phone number and you should give her a call and take her out it was the 70s you, that's how you met me you could just like cold call someone and be like hey uh, I met your cousin in San Francisco you want to go on a date yeah. and uh, my parents was he hitchhiking by any chance no no like, that, that came later no, uh, <laughs> so yeah they, they um, went on a blind date and uh, they got married six months later do you and know, they're still together. Do you know what bar here it was? Oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe not even a bit of bar. I just know that my dad met, hit on some woman, and she was married, and said, "Call my cousin." Yeah. But it actually was like her cousin-in-law. Like she's actually not, not. She's not related to my mom. She's like she was married to my mom's cousin. Okay. Um, okay. Do you know what brought your dad? Let's start with your dad. What brought him out here from New York? Uh, out work. west to well, LA. I guess he was just over New York. I want to get out and uh, in the city or. Well, uh, yeah, he was living in New York City. Uh, he's, he's originally from uh, Long Island. His mom was from Brooklyn. Um, so I grew up going out to New York a lot. Because uh, yeah. when I was growing up, my grandmother was in Queens. And, and Queens and um, Florida. And my, my grandmother was the only uh, old Jewish lady who moved to Florida to die and didn't die and moved back up north. Oh, shit. But she only made it to, um, to Baltimore and was, stayed uh, there for a few years. And that's where she expired. It's a funky, but, uh, t- funky town to stop in. And yeah, yeah, but my, my aunt and uncle are there. That's okay. why. Or we're there. I don't know where they are now. They're like Rhode Island now or some okay. shit. Um, but um, my dad was just over in New York, and um, it was the 70s, and he's like, well, I'm going to go to California. And uh, yeah. Sunny California. Yeah. yeah. And he went to L.A., you said. Yeah, I went to or... L.A., and my, my, my mom was in L.A. too. Okay. Do you know what brought your mom out? It's also sunny in El Paso. Let's yeah, just... yeah. I mean, it's California in the 70s. Who wouldn't want to be just there? the draw. You know, yeah. L.A. in the 70s? Yeah. Shit. That, I want to be in L.A. in the 70s. Right. You know? Right. And so, yeah. And so they met, and uh, they're still together 40-some-odd years later. If I'm 40 awesome. years old, they've been together for, like, what, 45 years almost? Like that? Fucking A. Maybe Fucking 43 a. or 4 years? Yeah. They still like each other, mostly. Awesome. Congratulations to the Sheffmans. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, do you know what kinds of things they were doing either for work or for fun when they moved to LA when they moved to California um, in other words how are you conceived <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I imagine uh, the old fashioned way <laughs> uh, yeah I don't know what they were into I mean they were um, it's funny do they, do they talk about their, their early California days I mean yeah yeah I mean they were in LA I was born in LA and they were here they were in LA for like uh, only for, I was only there for two years I moved when I was two we moved to El Paso Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, so my grandparents are in El Paso. Okay. Uh, is that, the Paso story is really interesting, actually. How Let's we got to it. El Paso. Let's this is it. you know I'm from Texas, right? Yeah, you're from like Houston, Fort Worth, Fort Worth. All right. So very, very, very different from El Paso. Like, there, I mean, it's also like a thousand and a half miles from El Paso. Approximately ten million miles. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very in, different. in so many but, ways. But it's like uh, if you're from Texas. All Texas towns you like have an affinity for. It. Like they're kind of like yours. Sure, and, yeah, and, so. and El Paso is like a whole other world. Like, like, it's, it's a border. It's like the biggest border it, town. Yeah, I mean, like up until recently, I mean, up until the past 10, 15 years, um, El Paso and Juarez, the border was very fluid. Yeah, you know, I mean, like the whole region, like, like the whole region together is like a million and a half people. You know, yep. and maybe more. Uh, but that's changed obviously in the past 10, 15 years with the cartel wars, whatever. Yeah. Um, but. Um, El Paso has always been a very blue part of Texas. Mm-hmm. At least not always, but the past, for the past like you know 30, 40 years, mm-hmm. and the whole, in fact, the whole Gulf Coast is. Yeah, Beto didn't start that. Beto that. did not start that. But yeah, he's of that though. Oh I mean, sure, he's, sure. He's exactly of that. And I definitely know. I'm guaranteed my grandmother knew his grandmother. Yeah. And, you know, like it's 
it's a small area out there, you know, especially yeah. in, like white people. There's like not a lot of white people in El Paso, yeah. you know, like and so like it's it's mostly like and there's not a lot of Jews in El Paso either. I so imagine. so let me get back to that. So, there, so sure. it's a really interesting sure, story. Sure, sure. And so um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So El Paso is like at this point probably nearly ninety percent Latino. So it's it's a it's a maybe not as much my parent my mom was growing up, but so I, my great grandfather left uh, Lithuania. Uh, it was World War One was he was on the rise. It was about to happen, kind of thing, and um, he knew he didn't want to get conscripted into the, the Tsar's army because Jews and people and peasants and got where they were cannon fodder. They just like, got thrown in front of the lines. And so he like literally just walked out of his village and went east. He didn't even go west. He went east and like I don't know like exactly he walked all the way through to fucking but he had, or, like to. To, you know, to, to if he had money for, yeah, I don't know if he had money for trains or <laughs> yeah. wagons, or whatever. Right. But like he uh, and made it all the way. He left um, um, through China. Wow. Uh, went, went through Japan. Holy fuck! I've got a photo on my Instagram actually of my great grandfather in Japan. It's like a Yokohama like uh, photo studio, right? Or it might have been in San Francisco because he he landed in San Francisco and, okay. he, and he helped uh, tear down the World's Fair in 1915. Oh shit! I was right? about to ask when. So like, kind of. When World War Two One was starting, mm -hmm. that shit. Okay, great. Okay. So uh, he helped tear down the World's Fair. Okay. And, um, he had a uh, and he got a job as a dishwasher and learn learning English and like um, uh, and he had he had some family out in um, New Jersey. Okay. So then he you know saved some money, to, got a train out to New Jersey, whatever. Typically where the Jews were. New York, New Jersey, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Typically. And so yeah, actually, I imagine I bet you my grandfather, my great grandfather, probably came through Angel Island. I imagine. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so he made it out to. Um, uh, New Jersey and got a candy route selling candy door to door kind of whatever okay. for his family had a family's friend family business I don't know exactly holy ended shit ended up ended up joining the US Army anyways for World War One. Oh wow and got tuberculosis oh right? fuck and back then there was no cures for tuberculosis so what they do right. they just they like well you got this forever go to a warm dry place so he ended up going to um, outside outside of El Paso in New Mexico he went to I think it was Deming New Mexico okay and he uh Started a little goat farm, hmm. and uh, then sent out for his mother and his sweetheart, who was my great grandmother, and yes. brought them in from Lithuania. Awesome. And it started uh, the little goat farm there, and then they wanted to move closer to El Paso because that's where the a Jewish community was. Because my mm -hmm. great grandfather was Orthodox, mm -hmm. and so they moved to closer to El Paso, and uh, that's where my grandmother was born. And her, the, my great aunt, uh, she was born in Deming, and then um, the rest of them were born in El Paso. So yeah, and then um, so there were some Jews. Yeah, at there least was in your family. Yeah, there, I mean, there were some Jews in the Southwest, but yeah. like, yeah, but I mean, sometimes it's, not, it's not like LA or fucking New York, no. you know. <laughs> but you're surprised sometimes. I am like to find like, oh, Jews in El Paso. Everywhere, Jews everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah. just a smattering though. It's how they take over. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's part of the conspiracy, honestly. By the way, we're both Jewish. So yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, so uh, my grandmother was born in El Paso, my mom was born in El Paso, my brother's born in El Paso. It's like my ancestral homeland. Okay. But uh, nobody's really, there's only a couple people left there. Everybody else has gone to California or Phoenix or um, mostly California. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell any, talk about any more about your brief life in El Paso? Any good stuff? Uh, you know, I still have some friends from when I was in kindergarten there. I was going to ask how long, yeah. So you started school there. Yeah, I was there from age two to age seven. And when, okay. I, was age, when I was seven, I moved to San Diego. Okay. So I grew up in San Diego, pretty much. Yeah. And then I, after San Diego, I, I turned 18, and I went to Santa Cruz for college. And then I ended up here. I'm going to make you back up. Take a sip. Nice try breathing <sighs> over all that stuff. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, San Diego. Let's hear about it. What do you want to hear? It was a great place to grow up. Your life in San yeah. Diego. What this is your life in San Diego. What kind of shit were you into? Uh, I was into, like, hippie shit. Well, I was actually, like, the only, like... My high school was probably the only kid in tie dye in my high school. But I was like, when I was like in sixth grade, I had a friend who was like uh, had an older brother who was like into Velvet Underground and the Doors and stuff. And so then we got into that. And this then is I, like early nineties. Yeah, um, I graduated high school in ninety nine. Okay. So yeah, I was like mid mid nineties, early nineties. So okay. I, junior high, I, I like became like long hair, like tie dye kid, lots of hemp. I wore enough tie dye and hemp in my entire life. <laughs> look, look, I, everybody listening should thank me. Because I've done it for you. No one else has, ever has to wear tie-dye and hemp. I did so much of that in junior high and high school that like nobody ever has, has to like, do it again. No I'm one has starting to. to see it come back, <laughs> by the way. It, Royalties. It, all the 90s shit is back, man. It's so funny seeing like um, like teenage girls are dressed like Kurt Cobain who weren't alive when Kurt, Kurt Cobain was alive. And might not know who he is. Right, right. and yeah, all that shit. Yeah. yeah. So I was into like tie-dye and the doors and shit. So it was like, you know, all, when all my friends were like listening to like... Uh, 
no effects and like Blink-182 and stuff like that. I was like Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles and shit. Oh, okay. And, and the dead. But also like, at the same time, I also like loved, you know, it was the 90s. So I also listened to fucking, you know, Wu-Tang and, and you know, NWA and shit like that too. So I'd have my little like like hippie car with like Grateful Dead stickers and stuff and be like bump, go, going to school bumping NWA. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> Do you think maybe your sort of attraction to the hippie life style or whatever, the aesthetic or whatever, did you think that had anything to do with your parents' hippie past? Or, like, what were the influences, do you My think, parents that, were, that drew you into were that? were terribly hippie. I think they were just, like, regular people who, like, mm. I mean, I, mean I, I grew up listening to, like, Crosby, Stills, and Nash and stuff like that. But, like, they weren't, like, hippie hippies. They just, like, okay. they just, like cool, like, folky music, you know? Yeah. I mean, I grew up on, like, the like folk rock, like, Crosby, Stills, and Nash and, like, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. But also, like, soul music, like Curtis Mayfield and, and, and uh, all that stuff, too. Right that, my mom was more into the folky stuff. My dad was into the soul stuff, and they both kind of into both of them. Record, but, um, records, I, eight tracks. Oh man, I, st- I still have their whole record collection. Yeah, awesome. Little bits of it, probably out of the, the gazillion moves of records have disappeared. Like right, you know, right, right. But I've got some pretty cool records. Uh, at the beginning of uh, COVID, Kyle and I spent a lot of time uh, just listening to like fucking old LPs and like crying. <laughs> right. <laughs> just listen to Joni Mitchell and crying. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Kyle didn't cry. Just me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's hard not to cry when I listen to Johnny Mitchell. I just saw you tweeted the other day something about listening to Blue, right? Yeah, it was the 50th anniversary of Blue, right? And I managed to go on a walk through the city and listen to Blue and not the cry once. The entire thing, and did, yeah. you didn't not cry, cry once. Was the, yeah, is that your like the pandemic's over moment? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Man, I definitely had a moment during the pandemic. I remember because I was like, you know, spent a lot of time going on walks. Yeah. I spent like about three months uh, or more, um, and I have a schedule where I'd work until about one o'clock. And then I spent from one to two calling people in Florida for Joe Biden. Right. Not that I necessarily give a fuck about Joe Biden as much as I was like, we or, just can't. Or we, Florida. <laughs> right. I just like, we got to beat Trump, you know? Right. And uh, that's a whole other. That's, man, the Florida conversations were crazy. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, and we'll then. We'll rap with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> and then I, so after calling for an hour, then I go run a walk for an hour or so. And like, I remember having this one moment, like, listening to Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah and like Ooh. like over by Cafe Floor and totally just started crying. Oh, yeah. Because it was like all the stress of the fucking whatever and also just such a beautiful song, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. But going back to the music that you uh, had in your household, basically your parents' music. Um, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Are you like, thanks mom and dad for totally. having that shit around. It's I still stuff. listen to like, I mean, most of the music I listen to is like people who are like, 80 years old or dead, you know? Like, right, right, right. I'm just an old guy when it comes to music. Like, I'm like, man, you should have heard music in the 90s, man. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, I'm a big music head and I love music, but I, I'm really only hip until about 2006. Ooh, which that's later maybe, than me. Maybe like three years after college, you know? Mm-hmm. And then like, I just like, can't keep up, you know? Oh, no, right, and I right, like, right. you know, I like, started a career in, and I, it's hard because like, I, um, I work with words all day, so I can't like listen to stuff with words. You write. Yeah, it's really exactly. hard to listen to music and write. Yeah. Unless, unless it's like words in a language I don't understand. Yeah. It's Portuguese, it's cool, you know? I don't yeah, understand Portuguese. Exactly. Spanish is a little harder, you know? Yeah, hard to listen to podcasts also. Yeah, I cannot listen to podcasts no. when I work. I just started listening to podcasts on my walks. Exactly. Because I have time exactly. to listen to them. Exactly. Okay, let's go back to San Diego. So were you like were you cool with it or were you like, I'm gonna get I'm gonna graduate from high school and get out of here and see more of the world, be, live somewhere else? Growing up in San Diego was awesome. Okay. Like, even then, I was like, this is cool. But, I mean... What I, about it? Well, I mean, I still wanted more, you know? Uh, but, I mean, like, I was I grew up in a, in a place called University City. It's a, it's a little... It originally, was built for so that the people who were, worked at UCSD could have housing. So, it was, like, it's east of La Jolla, north of Claremont. It's, like, um, you know, uh, growing up, it's that. middle class, upper middle class. Yeah. And um, now it's, like, really expensive. Now it's, like, a fancy place, I right. think. But, like... Um, but it's like super suburbia. Yeah. And so, um, but is it more than weather and Mexican food? I mean, that's two great things. Really. <laughs> For sure. But is I mean, there more to it that you liked as a ki- you know as a as a teenager? And, and a yeah. You know, I mean, it was just beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it is. you know, what we did what most of my high school years. What we did is me and my buddies we'd we'd hop in the car and we'd drive around smoking weed, looking for more places that to smoke weed at. You exactly, know, exactly. But they were like we'd drive to La Jolla, which was like only like fifteen minutes away, ten minutes away, and like there'd be these beautiful spaces like above the ocean. Yeah. Like when we had nothing to do, we had fuck all to do. Uh, we went to this place called La Jolla Farms, which is like literally the cl- the cliffs above Black's Beach. Oh wow! It's like, oh, we have nothing to do. I guess we'll just go there again and get high. and just smoke weed and eat eat you know uh, ecstasy and just chill out. You know. Yeah. 
do you want to talk about what other like were you drinking at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I got into the drugs and, and booze early, but like I've, I'm lucky that I don't have that the gene that says more, 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 more. Oh right. I've always enjoyed uh, drugs and booze uh, mm-hmm. to a certain extent, but like never problematically. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you the oldest? You have siblings. I got a younger brother. Yeah. So it's just the two of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I started smoking weed when I was like 14 and started drinking when I was probably 15. Mm. Um, I got so much poison oak growing up smoking weed in the canyons. <laughs> I'm like I'm like PTSD just from Poison Oak. Like I see it, I'm just like get the fuck away from me. So there was a price to pay for oh doing god. drugs. Oh my god, Nancy Reagan kid- was right. Are you kidding me? Like I fucking hate Poison. Like so, San Diego. Yeah, it's gnarly. It's mostly like mesas and canyons, you know. Mm-hmm. And so like you just go and you can take the canyons all over. And so we just yeah. go down to the canyons and like smoke weed and like hang out with homeless people and just like have weird fucking days as teenagers. And um, they got a lot of Poison Oak, a lot of Poison Oak. A lot of this sounds familiar, minus the poison oak about your life now, <laughs> hanging out with homeless people and doing yeah, drugs. Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't smoke weed anymore, though, barely. I mean, occasionally. Okay. Like, it just makes me so paranoid now. Well, now that it's legal, it's not fun. What? It's just so strong. I smoke weed, yeah. I'm just like, is Morgan mad about that thing I said in eighth grade? <laughs> you know? like. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah, sorry, Morgan. Yes. Yeah. I hope you're listening. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. So so then when when it came time to when you graduated from graduated from high school yeah I'm assuming um, and then you're like I'll go to college was was it always like was it ever a question that you would leave you're like oh I knew I was getting out of San Diego okay for sure okay. I mean I, I it was just like I don't know you, you want to get out of where get away from where you're from you know and um, and I went and you know checked out some colleges and UC Santa Cruz you know remember remember I was like a crunchy hippie wannabe kid you know yeah I, I didn't realize how much I was a wannabe hippie till I got to UC Santa Cruz I was like all yeah. right you know yeah. I think I'm done with this whole fucking thing <laughs> this charade <laughs> yeah yeah you graduated hippie undergrad yeah and totally then went to hippie uh, yeah grad hippie, hippie university it was like all right <laughs> yeah. but yeah I went to UC Santa Cruz and it was the, the, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life can I hear real quickly what other schools you visited though yeah and visited, considered visited Humboldt. Okay. And uh, Davis and maybe Berkeley. Um, San Diego State was my backup, you know? Sure, right, if you didn't get in. Right, right. Okay. But my, my, my first choice was, uh, even if I'd gotten to Berkeley, I, which I did not get to do, mm-hmm. I still would have gone to UC Santa Cruz. It just fe- yeah, felt like just, it fit me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And also, have you been to that fucking campus? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, you're it's in the red, stupid. you're on a hill in the redwoods with a view of the ocean. Yeah, it's stupid. Well, I like walk through like Ewok lands to get to classes. Right. It's crazy. Right. And it's, you said 99, 2000? Yeah, I started in 99. Okay. Let's hear about your time in Santa Cruz. Um, oh, it was like blessed. Okay. <laughs> it was so great. Like, I mean, to be fair, like, I didn't even have grades when I was there. It was, it was still pass fail when I was there. You know? Okay. And so, like, imagine, like, you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm, I'm straight out of high school and I'm like living in the dorms and like surrounded by these like really fucking cool, interesting people. Like to the day, to the day, the people who I was friends with in the dorms are doing amazing things. Like Jesse Thorne, you know Jesse Thorne. He's he's one of the like the, he's like one of the first podcasters, really. He, his his thing's called it used to be called the Sound Young America. Now it's called Bullseye. Okay. But um, he was like he's been podcasting since we were in Santa Cruz, basically. And he's got his whole, he's got his own podcast network. He's on NPR and all this stuff. Um, there's Shakina Nafak, and she's like on. On Broadway, and she's in all kinds of shows like uh, Difficult People, and uh, oh, she yeah. she was in. Um, Love that show. Yeah, she's she's also like uh, I think one maybe the first trans uh, actress to be considered in, for the Academy Award. Kind of, she's just, she's incredible, man. And it's you like, went to to so, college with her. Yeah, Shakina's okay. a good friend of mine. Um, Ashcon, uh, you know, from. Um, Viral video fame, you know, mm-hmm. from the Giant song. Uh, mm-hmm. Anton Patzner, who was violinist in like uh, Bright Eyes and The Faint, and, all, oh. and now he's now him and his wife have this band called Foxtail Brigades, and they um, he also scores movies and all kinds of like awesome. all the, and there's other people I can't even think of. It's just really cool, talented people who are all there at, at the one time, you know. And um, that's just that was just Porter College. When I was at, there was another ten colleges or no at that time nine colleges there all kinds of cool people and so surrounded by these people in this beautiful place and it was like so free and freeing and like it was like you were expected to experiment and be weird like we you know there's a thing called first rain where everybody takes off their clothes and runs naked the first time it rains mm-hmm. i didn't do that because it was really cold that night but I, <laughs> but I, I i did it on the last rain you know it's like I'm, a lot warmer <laughs> sorry just evoking memories of the seinfeld episode the shrinkage, shrinkage yeah. 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 I was like, yeah, that's really cool. But the, I got naked and ran the last rain time I okay, ran in my good, freshman yeah. year, you know. Yeah, you eventually made it. Yeah, it was great. Did you care about the school part much? Or um, were you more just like the, the social world and, and the, the just, you know, the well, fucking beauty and, and all that stuff? I'm one of those people who like, uh, 
if it doesn't come easy to me, I don't like it, you know? Well, and there's so, something like, to be said for that, right? So, like, I've never, never been good at math and science, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, except, let, you let other people do be yeah, good at that yeah. stuff for you. I'm not going to say I didn't cheat to get through uh, math and science in high yeah. school, you know? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I like, I like the conceptual ideas of science. I just, you know, the math part bothers me. Application. So, like, you know, yeah. I didn't really have to worry about that as much in college. And so, like, as someone who's, like, a, a writer and a verbal person, and I, I like history, mm-hmm. uh, getting to focus on classes that I liked. Like, mm-hmm. I've always been good at school, you know, uh, better at some parts than others, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, and so, so college is really cool in terms of that. I like the school part. I mean, granted... If I went to school now at 40 as opposed to 18, I would definitely have a different experience. Oh, totally. I'd be much more focused on it. But, you know, it was school was a lot cheaper then than it is yeah. now. And, yeah. like, I was there as a liberal arts degree. I got a degree in American studies, which I is, like, gonna ask, how to yeah. be a waiter when you get out of college, you know? Like, <laughs> right. But, you know, it, it, American studies is, like, a mixture of, like, um, history, sociology, and, like, uh, politics, you know? Right. And it was awesome. Did you come straight to San Francisco from Santa Cruz? So, um, my senior, my, somewhere between my junior and senior year of uh, college, I had an internship in San Francisco at Bill Graham Presents. Oh, yeah. I, I, I what year was that? Uh, that summer of 2002. Two, okay. So, I had a, I, I was throwing concerts in Santa Cruz, and I'm so glad that I got out of that because I, I'm, uh, but so I got an internship at Bill Graham Presents, and, um, and, st- and there's still people I'm still friends with there uh, from, from those, that time. I saw so many great shows that summer. Yeah. Uh, during your internship. Yeah, during my internship, yeah. Unpaid internship? Yeah, it was unpaid for sure. As it goes. But you got the experience yes. of being here. It was good. I got to go to all kinds of shows for free that summer at the Fillmore and like Shoreline, whatever. And so that summer, um, I met uh, my first serious girlfriend on the bus here in San Francisco, uh, Tia. So yeah, so we met on the 71 bus. We were together for like three and a half years after that or something like that. And uh, she, because um, she was a student at... Uh, or she was about to be a student at um, uh, USF. Okay. So anyways, so, so she moved here right after the summer, and I went back to Santa Cruz, mm-hmm. and I was here every other weekend. Right. You know, so I consider when I first moved here in 2002, that was that summer, because I was here every other weekend after that, and then as soon as I graduated, I moved up here like five days later. In 2002? 2003. 2003, okay. But I still consider 2002 when I first moved here. Got it. Can we go back, because there must have been, like, what was your first time and impression of San Francisco. What was your first time to come here? Well, the first time I came here, I was a kid, and I don't remember that much. Right, okay. Uh, but um, uh, I remember uh, uh, vague memories of, like, the cable car turnaround, and mm-hmm. um, uh, the, the cable, guy, cable car turnaround guy, my brother had real long hair. My brother, the cable car, thought he was my little sister, the guy. And he was like, oh, your sister wants to help, too? Mm-hmm. And then also, there was some cool cab driver who gave us a bunch of baseball cards for some reason. Oh. I don't remember. But, nice. um, but then when I came here as more of an adult, um, I uh, had a cousin when I was in Santa Cruz. I my cousin Becky was here in the city, and so I used to come up and stay on her couch or her floor, and we'd go out. I remember like one of the first bars I went to uh, in the city was uh, Casanova. Oh yeah, yeah, and and also Amnesia. Still yeah, but like there. I remember like Not getting there. off the bus and just walking. And I was like, this place is so cool. And this is probably like uh, if I was twenty, was twenty one years old, so it must have been like uh, two thousand and two. Okay, before two thousand one, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. And I was like, there's so much happening here. I need to be here. Yeah. Because especially coming as a kid, you might not have the memories, but like San Francisco is so different. So, so different than oh, yeah. San Diego. Especially totally different. Like coming from San Diego is a whole other totally world. Totally different world. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get you. So now so now you're like, I'm I'm moving here. Yeah. I mean, it was the next logical step. You couldn't stay yeah. in Santa Cruz. Right. Santa Cruz is lovely, but it was so small. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big personality. <laughs> That was Broke Ass Stewart. On the next episode of Storied San Francisco, Stewart continues the story of his life and his move to San Francisco. Part two drops this Thursday. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 150 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, subscribe, rate, and review our show so we can reach even more folks. 
And if you'd like to drop us an old-fashioned email, we'd love that. The address is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.